the day that I get all the cases done, before 9 o'clock, I won't even say 8.45, but by 9 o'clock is the day that I think I'm ready to retire. So there's a good chance I'll be working until I'm 90 because I don't think it's possible, not for me. All right, what's this? Case 12. Oh. So this is like a big, um, kind of like a dermal-based nodule there. Um, like when I see stuff like this on the tests, um, but looking at it, I think you can see a little bit of like bones. Good. And like deep down. Um, and then it was hard for me to appreciate at first. <laughs> like I could even find a fluffy, feathery pink material um, that's good for gout. This is like the name of gout and osteomyelitis. Yeah, this is a, uh, a hard, this is an amputation specimen of a digit. So this is the bone and cartilage, but it's being totally destroyed. And at, at first glance, my first thought would be osteomyelitis here, an amputation, because most of the time when I see an amputation where the bone looks like this, it's because they have osteomyelitis, like in a, in a toe, on a, you know, an older adult, often with diabetes or vascular disease or something, and they've gotten an infection and there's neutrophils and a, a mixoid change and and granulation tissue, and it's destroying the whole bone. It's like falling apart, you know. You, you know, you can not even sometimes you barely see residual bone because it's so destroyed. But in this case, the gout here is very focal. So there's little islands of feathery clouds, pink clouds, pink cotton candy aggregates surrounded by histiocytes and giant cells. I have to say the, the osteomyelitis appearance is pretty prominent here, but the gout actually is is not really abundant in this case. And since we're already running late, let me just show you a better example that I happen to have seen recently. There's skin. It's as low as I can go, sorry. There's gout. Out of control gout, right? The best ever gout, if you will. Extensive pink fluffy clouds. Sometimes gout is usually it looks more pink on H and E, but sometimes it can get kind of a bluish appearance, kind of mixoidy or mucin looking. <clears throat> Even though all the crystals here have been washed out during the H and E staining process and and uh, 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 during uh, processing and staining, we're always taught that it's from the formalin that this tissue is submitted in, but actually that's uh, uh, I think not the case. Usually most of that is during the H and E staining and also. Uh, sometimes during processing to some degree, but sometimes it can get a bluish look. But but what you see is you can really kind of still appreciate like the kind of ghost outline of the crystals. Now I don't know what actually this is. Is it collagen or some other? I don't actually know what what is there. There oh, there are a few little purplish crystals in there, but really you can kind of see that feathery needle kind of appearance. But if you polarize this, you're going to see. Uh, I did actually polarize this to the day, and there were there were only a few focal areas where there are residual crystals. And I've got lots of videos on gout, so you can go see those. But this one, we don't need the, no polarization needed. Like this, nothing else looks like this. The pink fluffy clouds, and it's surrounded by a brisk histiocytic reaction with giant cells. And in this case, there's a little bit of bone. It's purple right there. Uh, this is a non-decalcified section. Oh, look. That's the area, actually. When you see uh, in the gout specimen and it looks brown, that brown is not actually brown pigment. It's actually air bubbles. It means that there's retained non-dissolved crystals. And if you polarize it, it will actually show up. Let me get to turn off the autocorrect. Put that in. Turn off the light. Oh, maybe I'll turn it on again. And now off. And then, ta-da. There's the biofringent. Uh, crystals here. So even better if you smear it uh, fresh and, and air dry it onto a slide. So uh, on this one, uh, it, the cut surface grossly was chalky. And so the, the, the pathologist assistant knew it was going to be gout and they took some and smeared it on a slide. But you can see it here on this section. If you get lucky on a big case of gout, sometimes there'll still be areas that have retained crystals. So there's a little trick for you that if you um, if you look for the uh, the brown areas like that, that's the areas where you're going to have retained crystals. But the other trick 
is that you can cut a section of uh, the, this tissue. And so we actually did that, cut a section of it, uh, heat it up to melt the paraffin off because paraffin has crazy polarization. If you have never seen that, take an unstained slide sometimes that has paraffin on it and look at it under polarized light. It has crazy like sea of Maltese crosses that like spin when you rotate the polarizing lens. It'll keep you entertained for a long time if you're like me at least. So anyway, gout sometimes can be real extensive and involve the bone of the digits and um, cause complete destruction of the bone to the point that amputation is required. And it also clinically, I've seen times where it was amputated thinking that it was osteomyelitis, but it actually just ended up being gout. Um, uh, maybe with osteomyelitis or maybe the inflammation was just from the gout. I don't know. And it also didn't matter because when the whole phalanx is destroyed, I mean, that I would want my digit amputated too if I had destruction of my phalanx with a huge gouty tophus and it was extremely painful. I think that that's probably would, would be um, potentially uh, help the situation. So in this case, the bone was like totally destroyed. I think I got another section here. Yeah, here's the bone. Here's more of the gout islands. This one's a little more pale because it was decalcified. Um, and so it, it makes the H&E stain pale. But you can see the bone is just completely destroyed by gout. So such a terrible disease. It's so morbid, so painful, um, but it's very classic. So again, we don't really, that is gout. I don't think there's anything else that I can think of that looks like this in pathology. So when you got that, you're good to go. Uh, but if you want to see the crystals, because let's face it, crystals are kind of interesting to look at, um, you, can, uh, you can use those tricks I just taught you to go find it here. A, a not less dramatic example, but there is also um, a, lots of inflammation. So maybe this patient also had infectious osteomyelitis. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know the history here. They very well may have. Uh, it would really depend on the clinical and on culture results. But uh, this was also a coexistent, at least gout and potentially osteomyelitis in an amputation specimen.